Hey everyone, welcome back to another Rockford Fosgate product training video brought to you by the Rockford Technical Training Institute. In this video, we're going to take a look at the new punch family of amplifier products featuring four monoblock, four two-channel amplifiers, two four-channel amplifiers, and one five-channel model amplifier. The new punch family of amplifiers, introduced in 2013, represented a major overhaul in the most popular series of amplifiers that Rockford manufactures. While the previous generation was great, technology is ever-changing, so it was time to do an update. But of course, just updating the circuit board was not enough for the Rockford engineering staff. They basically rebuilt these amplifiers from the ground up, adding some unique features that helped set them apart from the competition. So let's start with the basics. The circuit board was redesigned to improve signal flow and power efficiency to maximize the output power of the amplifier. Of course, the redesign incorporates some of Rockford's proprietary technology, such as Mesa, DTM, and Nomad, as well as a number of other new features. Couple this with a new heatsink design to increase thermal capabilities, and the new punch amplifier family is one of the most powerful that we've ever created. Now, we've talked before about some of the technologies used in our amplifiers, but one of the newest circuits that has been incorporated is CLEAN. Now, CLEAN stands for Calibrated Level Eliminates Audible Noise. One of the biggest challenges in setting up an amplifier in a customer's car is determining the clipping or distortion points of the head unit and amplifier outputs. Now, most of the time installers set the system gains by ear, and while this can get you close, it certainly isn't perfect. And unless your shop has and uses an oscilloscope or some other type of distortion detector, you really have no way of knowing if you're clipping the outputs. With the clean setup circuit, we're taking the guesswork out of setting the gains and more importantly, speeding up the process. Where you may typically spend 15 to 20 minutes setting a system's gains with clean, you can do it in as little as 15 seconds. In simple terms, we've integrated an oscilloscope into the amplifier and provided indicator LEDs that provide visual feedback of not only when the head unit clips, but also when the amplifier output reaches clipping. So let's take a quick look at the process of setting up a punch amplifier using the clean circuit. All right guys, let's take a look at what the setup process of using a punch series amplifier with the clean setup circuit built in is all about. So the first thing that you need to do is locate the punch setup disc that comes with every punch series amplifier. On this disc are a number of different setup tracks, test tones at different recording levels that we are going to use to identify what's the best level of setup for this amplifier. So first thing that we need to do is identify what the clipping point of the source unit that you're using actually is. Now, this is indicated on the amplifier by the input clip indicator LED located right next to where the RCAs plug in. For this test, because we're using a head unit, we need to determine what the full range output clip point is. So we are going to use a 1000 Hertz test tone recorded at zero dB. In this particular disc, it happens to be track number seven. So we're going to Go forward to track number seven. At that point, you're gonna start at zero and bring the volume of your head unit up. And what we're looking for is the input indicator light to turn red. Once it does, then we know that we've hit the clip point. So then we're going to back the volume down on the radio. This determines what the clipping point of your radio actually is. And this is the maximum volume that the customer is going to want to turn the volume up to at any point. From here, we can then go to the amplifier and set the input level controls or gain controls of the amplifier. So again, using the 1K test tone on the radio, we're not changing the volume level. We go to the front input level control and we're looking at the output clip LED. We begin turning the gain control up until we see the blue light turn on. Once the blue light is on, we know that that's the maximum output level of the amplifier unclipped. If we continue to turn 
the LED control up, you'll notice it turns red. This indicates that we actually have a clipped output. So we want to back it down until it's solid blue. We repeat the process with the rear channels. Now, once you have the front and rear channels set up, then we want to set up the sub-channel. In this particular case, a five-channel amplifier. We're going to use a 40 hertz, zero dB recorded track. On this disc, it happens to be track number five. So again, utilizing the same volume level that we set the amplifier to earlier, we're going to then go to the sub-output level control, begin bringing it up, again, until the blue light turns on. This again determines the maximum output level of the sub-channel without clipping. Okay, so now that we have the input gains of the amplifier set at a zero dB level, we actually want to go back and be able to give the customer a little bit more output from the amplifier. The reason we do this is, even though, again, we set it at zero dB, most music information is not recorded at a zero dB level. Typically, it's between minus 5 and as much as minus 10 dB recording levels. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go back and tweak the input gains to give that customer just a little bit more output. So what we're going to do is still using a 1K test tone, we're going to go up to track number 11, which is a minus 5 recording level. So as you can see, our input gains where before with track 7 they were blue, they've now gone out, which indicates the level has dropped. So this allows us to again make adjustments to each the front and the rear to get a little more gain out of the amplifier to get a little more power for the customer. So this will improve the overall output of the system and maximize the power capability of the amplifier. We'll repeat the same process with the sub-channel. Now, subwoofers, because they are more powerful and they can accept a little more abuse, we can actually set them up so they can go as much as minus 10 dB of overlap. So for that, we're going to go track 13, which is a 40 hertz minus 10 dB track, and adjust the input until the blue light comes back on. With that, your setup is complete. So once you get familiar with this process, it becomes very easy to be able to determine what clipping point of the radio is, as well as the clipped output level. And this ensures that the output of that audio system is clean, unclipped, and undistorted. So as you can see, setting up an amp is a much simpler process when using our clean circuit. Another added feature of the punch amplifier is balanced differential inputs, which feature a high level signal input and auto turn on capability. The differential input circuit measures the voltage of both the positive and negative input signal. Then the circuitry subtracts the voltage common to both conductors, which is the noise, resulting in only the clean audio signal being allowed to enter the amplifier. Additionally, the input circuit allows you to run either a low-level RCA signal in or a high-level speaker level signal into the same input without needing to go through a high-low converter first. Being able to tap into a factory speaker wire for signal and run it directly into the amplifier simplifies the install greatly. Rockford offers two different speaker wire to RCA connector adapters to assist in this. The RFI-2SW and the RFI F 2SW, with one having male RCA connections and the other female. Remember, these are simply adapters for speaker to RCA connections and not high low converters. So make sure that you only use them with amplifiers that can accept the high level input into their RCAs. A secondary benefit of using the speaker level input signal is that the amplifier has an auto on function when it detects a DC offset voltage embedded in the audio signal. This is only present on speaker outputs and not RCA low-level signals. Of course, this eliminates the need to locate a turn-on signal in most cases when tapping into a factory system to add aftermarket amplifiers. Now lastly, as an optional accessory, we have the punch level control. This remote control allows the customer to adjust the output level of the amplifier without affecting the overall system volume. As we all know, 
Some music types may have a lot of bass and others may not have so much. So the customer may want to be able to adjust the output level of their bass without turning up the volume or adjusting the bass level in their head unit. The PLC controls range of adjustment is dictated by where you've set the gain control of the amplifier. This ensures that provided the gains are set properly to the system, the customer cannot overdrive the output beyond what the installer has dictated. An additional feature built into the level control is a remote clipping indicator. This indicator will turn red if the customer turns the volume of the radio up beyond its determined clipping point. This works in parallel with the input clip indicator on the amplifier and alerts the customer that they need to turn the volume down to help protect their speakers. So as you can see, a lot of thought has gone into the redesign of the punch amplifiers in an effort to not only make them better than ever before, but also to help you install them more quickly and set them up properly every time. Hopefully this helps give you a better understanding of the new punch series of amplifier, and I'll see you again in our next video.